Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the top 10 Warcry Mounted Fighters. In this video, we'll be using the four Warcry supplement books to take all of our fighters and their abilities from. We won't be using any of the fighters with the leader room mark, and so awesome models like this Chaos Lord on a Karkadrak won't be included, but he'd certainly be in the top 10 if they were. The 10 fighters I've chosen won't be in any particular order, but I will save my favourite until last. And all I'm looking for is the mounted room mark on their fighter card and just making sure they are actually riding some kind of beast and not like a mechanical um, vehicle of some kind. In the core book, you're going to find some rules associated with any mounted fighters with the mounted room mark. And the first one is that fighters with the mount room mark cannot climb. So that's quite a big deal in Warcry. And also there's some restrictions. If they've got the mount room mark, they can't go through archways or through doors. OK, let's get started. And in at number 10 is the Black Knight from the Legions of Nagash. So now we're in the Grand Alliance of Death. And this guy's quite low, 135 points, got a nice movement 10, toughness 4, and can take 25 wounds. Got that Mount Room Mark and no others, so we're not going to see many abilities for this guy. And with his weapon, it's got this long, like, lance or spear, and that's going to be a weapon range of 2. He can make 2 attacks, strength 3, and he's going to deal 1 to 4 on a crit. So that shield he's got is giving him that extra toughness. He's coming in toughness 4, but for 25 wounds and a movement 10, that's not bad for 135. But don't expect him to do a great deal of damage with just two attacks and the strength is only a 3 as well. And here's his abilities. And because he's part of the Legions of Nagash with their rune mark, the faction rune mark, he can use the double shambling horde. We won't go through that, but we will go through the specific ability that he can use because of the mount rune mark. And this is a quad called Deathly Charge. And here, until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick one visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. Then allocate a number of damage points to that enemy fighter equal to the value of this ability. Now this is a nice way to deal some instant damage if you can get close enough to an enemy fighter. But for a quad I think it's pretty expensive. Uh, you know, if you get 5 or 6 as your ability value then you are going to deal that 5 or 6 damage points right away. But as far as quads go this isn't one of the better ones. And now at number nine, we've got the Kavalos Death Rider with Nadarite Blade. And he's coming in a little bit more expensive now, 170 points. Got a movement eight, a good toughness five, and he can take 20 wounds. We've got that Mount Rune Mark, and one other Rune Mark for an ability we'll see especially for him. And then he's got a weapon range of one. He can make three attacks, strength three, and he's going to deal two to four on a crit there. Now in the image, I think I've got a different... Uh, weapon we've got this kind of spear here but if you choose from that pack of five uh, death riders that you can get you can choose some different weapon options but i think with this fire it's the toughness that we're really getting for our money and with a toughness five and 20 wounds that's not bad at all but let's have a look at those abilities and for having the faction rune mark for the ossiarch bone reapers he is going to get a double nadarite weapon but he does also get this death rider charge because he's got the warrior rune mark and so let's have a look at that one now this is a triple and until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter, then allocate a number of points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So this is the same as we saw with the previous fighter, only this time it's a triple. So much better to use this as a triple. The quad's a bit too much. And um, yeah, so I think for a triple, this is a lot better. And again, you want a five or six just to deal that instant damage. But a great looking model, I think would be really fun to play. Now we're on to the Grand Alliance of Destruction. And this guy, the Mournfang pack with Gargant Hacker, was almost my favourite out of the ten here. A great model. The set of these look really great. And I think they're definitely on my to-get list. I think they look brilliant. But the points are really getting higher now with 100, uh, sorry, 245 points. We've got a nice movement 8, a toughness 4, and he's going to take 35 wounds, so a huge amount of wounds. He's got the Mount Rune Mark and that Brute Rune Mark, so we're going to see some abilities for him. 
and then he's got this weapon, which is a range of one. He's going to make two attacks. The strength is five, but he's going to do a huge amount of damage if he hits. It's going to be four on a normal hit and eight on a critical hit. So this guy can really put out the punishment. He's strong and deals a huge amount of damage, but he can also take it at 35. And that movement eight is no joke either. So he can certainly get around the battlefield. Let's have a look at his abilities. And for this brute room arc, he's got a double called On the Moor Path. And here we can add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the move characteristic of this fighter for the next move action they make this activation. So this is nice. Get a five or six. We can round that up to three, then halve it, round it up to three. And then we can add three to that movement of eight. So potentially 11 there, but only for the next move action. So you won't be able to use it if you decide to move twice during an activation. Then we've also got this triple bull charge, and this is exactly the same as the abilities we've previously seen on the two fighters that came before him. So he's going to be able to do that instant damage, and again, it's on a triple, so that's really nice. As long as he ends that move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, he can deal some damage, and again, you are a nice high value of five or six. Next, we've got another great model and a great fighter from the alliance of destruction and these guys the boar boys are definitely on my list to get i'm going to wait till i finish painting all of my orcs before i do get this set though i'm going to make myself wait um, but it does look really good and at 205 points we're getting a movement of 10 tough to spore and he can take 25 wounds we've got the mystic rune mark and we've got the mount rune mark so really cool to see the mystic rune mark coming into play with one of the mounted fighters and then we've got a weapon range of three he can make three attacks, strength five, and he's going to deal two on a normal hit and four on a crit. So I think this guy's great. For 205 points, I think we get quite a lot here. Strong, pretty tough, and can take the wounds. But let's have a look at these abilities. And he's going to get the double charge and the quad rampaging destroyer just for being part of the bone splitters um, faction because he's got the faction room mark. But then he's got this double, which is beast spirit juju for that mystic room mark. And here until the end of the battle round, add one to the toughness characteristic of friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So this is great. If you want to put together uh, like maybe a few of these boar boys and attack as like a little pack, then I think you could really improve the toughness of them all by using him. But I think he would be great just almost on his own with some of the lower point bone splitters on foot and put them in little groups around the battlefield and then use him to move quickly between them adding to their toughness with his ability so i think that would be a really good use of this guy so if i get him i'll certainly be trying that out and um yeah just maybe just having him as the only mounted one in the whole warband and see how that works out but i think that'd be a real fun tactic to play and now sticking with the Alliance of Destruction, we're looking at the Oric Gore Grunter with Jagged Gore Hacker. And this beast is awesome. This looks really good, this model. I really like this one. And at 210 points, again, I think you're getting quite a lot here. You're getting a movement of eight. You're getting a toughness of four. And he can take 35 wounds, which is a huge amount. We've got the Mount Rune Mark and one other Rune Mark for an ability we'll see for him. He can make an attack with this Gore Hacker. And it's a range of two. He can make two attacks, strength five, and he's going to deal two on a normal hit and four on a critical hit. So he taking those 35 wounds is awesome. And being able to have a strength five is really nice as well. So for 210 points, I think this looks great. But let's have a look what we get for the ability. And he gets the double charge and rampaging destroyer as a quad just for being part of the iron jaws. But he also gets this gore grunter charge. And you've guessed it, it's very similar to the ones we already see, where you have to finish a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, and then pick another enemy fighter, or the same one, within one inch of this fighter, and then simply allocate the number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So five or six, again, we're looking for, and we can deal some instant damage. So that, on top of the other abilities he's got, I think this is really good. And we can also use the universal abilities here to up his number of attacks with Onslaught. So I think this guy's really good. Again, a contender for one of the favourites. I think there's some really awesome models that are available on the mounts. This next one's pretty cool, and now we're into the Grand Alliance of Chaos. And this is the Blood Crusher. And I think one good thing about this is you can use him both in Age of Sigmar, Warcry, or you can use him in Warhammer 40,000 as well. So I think having that double use is awesome. And for 185 points, you don't get as much movement here with a movement six, 
Toughness is four, so that's not bad. And he can take 30 wounds, so a huge amount of wounds that he can take there. We've got some rune marks for Destroyer and Mount. And the weapon is a range of one with that blade. He can make four attacks, strength four. And he's going to deal two on a normal hit and four on a critical hit. So for 180 point, 85 points, I think it's pretty well-rounded. Four attack strength four is nice, dealing that two to four. And the wounds he can take is great too. But let's have a look at the abilities and see what we get. So he's got double blood for the blood god for being part of the demons of corn. But he's also got this triple murderous charge that comes with that destroyer rune mark. And again, it's the same as all the ones we've seen up until now. Um, he has to just finish within one inch of an enemy fighter, and then he can deal some damage out for free. So for 185 points, not bad at all. Uh, I wouldn't say he's one of my favourites out of the 10, but I think having that versatility, being able to use him in two games, is really good. And I've also got this model as well, so I think this is a one that would make the top 10 no problem. And still with Chaos, we've got the Chaos Knight with Curse Lunch and a Chaos Rune Shield. And this one's 220 points, got a nice movement 10, a huge toughness 6 and can take 22 wounds. So that's a nice combo. Toughness 6 and being able to take 22 wounds is really good. We've got this Curse Lunch with a range of 2. We can make two, attack, 2 attacks, strength 4, and we're going to deal 2 on a normal hit and 5 on a critical hit. So this is pretty good. Two attacks, I'd like to see more, but again, we can use Onslaught because we've only got that range of two, which is below three, so that's really good. And being able to deal two or five is nice as well. So not bad for 220, but let's see what abilities he can use and if he's got any with that Mount Rue mark. And so he's got Imbued with Dark Power as a double just for being part of the Slaves to Darkness. But it's this triple trampling hooves and you can guess exactly what this ability is going to be it's yet again finishing that move action with one inch of an enemy fighter so nice we can use the triple rather than a quad that we saw in the first one and do a little bit extra damage but i think i'd be using doubles with this guy just to get the onslaught um i think that would work out a lot better for him especially if you can get close enough in one activation and then your next activation make two attacks and then each attack would use Onslaught to get it up to three dice instead of two. I think that would be a good use of this guy. You know, he's tough. He's got a lot of wounds. So having him close to the enemy, he's certainly going to be able to withstand a bit of punishment while he waits for his next activation. Now we're moving into the Grand Alliance of Order and we've got the Demigriff Knight. And I've never seen this one before, even though I've looked through the book so many times and done deep dives. It's never really stood out to me. I think just seeing the little image on the card, you can often miss what they look like in full like this. But it looks really interesting, really great model. They come in, I think, a pack of three, and for 185 points, this one has got a movement of eight, a toughness five, which is pretty respectable, and can take 22 wounds. We've got the mount rune mark, and we've got one other rune mark, so we're gonna see another ability there. That's the champion rune mark, I believe. Yep, the champion rune mark. And he's got a weapon range of two, can make three attacks, strength three, and he's gonna deal two to five, on a crit. So pretty tough at five, not very strong, um, but three attacks, he's got a chance of dealing some damage, especially with five on a crit there. He's from the Cities of Sigmar, and the Cities of Sigmar is really fun to build a warband around. You've got a great mechanism for choosing which city they fight out of, and so you've got loads of choice and lots of different abilities to choose. So you can really make some awesome warbands through it. I think it's certainly my favourite way of building a warband. And so this one I've chose for him, though, is the Hammerhaw Fighter abilities. And he's got a double reclaim for Sigmar and a quad righteous purpose. But because he's got that... I think it's the elite rune mark, actually. Is it the? I think it's the elite, not the champion. Because he's got the elite rune mark, it's cavalry charge is a triple. And you've guessed it. As long as he finishes within one inch of a visible enemy fighter, he can deal some damage there. So that's going to be pretty much the same for a lot of these as we've seen. Um, but a really interesting looking model, I think, would be fun to play. It's certainly with that way you can build the Cities of Sigma warbands. Really fun. Next, we've got Sister of the Thorn. I think this is a great looking model. It looks fantastic. And for 125 points, it's not very expensive either for a mounted model. And this one is 10, movement of 10, toughness 3, and she can take 18 wounds. We've got the mount rune mark. And then the weapon choice I like. That's why I picked this one. We've got a nice range of up to 8. And you can make 2 attacks, strength 3. And you can deal 1 on a normal hit, 4 on a critical hit. So not very strong, not very tough. 
can't make many attacks and you're not going to deal a huge amount of damage. But for me, it was that movement 10 and then the range of 8 that really appealed. Because I think you can certainly get around the board really quickly, stay out of harm's way. And then you've also got that 8 inch range to attack from. So you can move, keep your distance and keep attacking. And you're going to go up against a lot of warbands with a movement of 4. So they're going to have to use both their actions during the activation as move actions just to get up to you if you keep at that eight inch range and then they won't be able to attack until the next activation in which case you could potentially activate first and then move out of the way anyway so i think with this one you've got lots of flexibility there and certainly you're going to you're going to be able to keep really out of the way of the enemy and unless they've got some ranged attackers you could almost you know avoid being hit for the whole battle and now we've got some abilities. Now the Mount Rumark doesn't give access to any abilities unless we chose a different city from the Cities of Sigma. But I chose the Living City because I thought this would be quite good. And you've got the Double Hunters of the Hidden Paths as the first one. And here you can add half the value of the ability rounding up to the move characteristic of this fighter for the next move action they make this activation. So I thought this was pretty cool. You know, five or six, we can round that up, halve it and then round it up to three. And then that's going to make that movement 13. And for one movement, or the next one in the activation at least, that's really good. I also like Strike and Melt Away, where you can make a bonus attack. Then you can make either a bonus move or bonus disengage action as well. So I thought that was a really good one for the quad. Pretty similar to what we've already got, but it's come with that option to disengage. And I thought that was really good. If you do get up close and in harm's way, you can disengage and then get out of the way as well. So I think that's really good. And that now brings us to our top number one mounted fighter for Warcry. And that's my favourite one, the Saurus Knight with Celestite War Spear. And this guy's 115 points. He's got a movement six, toughness four, and can take 20 wounds. We've got two rune marks. We've got the Mount rune mark, and we've got the Warrior rune mark. And with a weapon, it's a range of two. It can make two attacks, strength three, and he's going to deal one on normal hit and four on a critical hit. And so at first glance, there's not an awful lot going on here. The movement six isn't great for mounted. 20 wounds is okay. Two attacks isn't very good. And strength three isn't either. Um, but I just really like the look of this model. I think for 115 points, it's pretty cheap as well. And you can also, with the set, you get eight of them all together. So you can put together all eight mounted beasts into a warband. And I think that'd be really fun to play. Of course, you're going to have limitations. You won't be able to climb, go through doorways or archways. And so it would be really interesting to try it out, I think, and see how they get on. But for dominating the objectives and moving around the battlefield, I think that six movement is, is OK. And then you can use the universe abilities just to add that extra one inch to it anyway. Another option would just be to take four of these Saurus Knights into battle and then have the other fighters on foot. And with the, such low points and such... Um, variety with the Seraphon. I think you've got lots of options just by having this set in your arsenal. I also quite like the ability that comes with this. The Warrior Room Art gives us a triple called Tearing Bite. And here we can add the value of this ability to the damage points allocated by each hit or critical hit from the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation that has a range characteristic of three or less. So there's some conditions here. It's only for the next attack made during the activation and you can only roll two attack dice for that attack. So you've got to get one of those to hit to be able to use this. And with only a strength three, you know, if you're going up against some of the tougher enemy fighters, then you're going to be up against it to pull this one off. But if you go against some of the weaker ones, you've got a decent chance. And then if you're getting a five or six as your ability value you can just add that on to each hit or critical hit and then do some serious damage potentially even taking some out in one activation so i think that's really good use and for a triple that's all right as well but i really like the look of the fighter i think as war bands go and factions go the seraphon are really interesting and i think having a few of these just darting around the battlefield will be really fun but that's our top 10 war cry mounted fighters. And I'd love to know what you think about these. Have you got a favorite from the 10 we went through in this video? Or is there one that you think should have made it in the top 10? And if it was your top 10, who would you put in there? But I'd love to know what you think. So join in the comment section below. I always love reading the comments and getting your feedback. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. I'll be doing lots more of these top 10s for Warcry, really fun to make. And it's great to go over all the fighters again and have a real close look at them all. So look out for more of these top 10s coming soon. And also check out the videos I've been doing for the new Red Harvest. There'll be loads of information coming out for that this Saturday, so I can't wait for that. But again, thanks for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.